If your tests show high cholesterol, you may try changing your diet and eating less fatty food, only to see your cholesterol rise even more. Let's sort out why this happens, how to properly influence cholesterol, and what medications are currently available for high cholesterol. Good and bad cholesterol. High-density lipoproteins, HDL, the good cholesterol. This is a mix of fat and protein, with lots of protein and little fat. They protect us from cardiovascular disease. Low-density lipoproteins, LDL, the bad cholesterol. In this complex, there's a lot of fat and little protein. They promote cardiovascular disease. Why a low-fat diet doesn't work. The typical diet of an average person is already low in protein. If you cut down on fat as well, your protein intake usually drops further because protein and fat often come together in foods like meat, dairy, fish, and eggs. By reducing fatty foods, you also reduce your protein sources. As a result, cholesterol complexes have less protein and more fat, leading to harmful cholesterol. The carbohydrate problem. The carbohydrate problem. When there's little fat and little protein, where do the remaining calories come from? From carbohydrates, sugars, grains, pastries. You load up on bread, cereals, and sweets, and the liver turns carbohydrates efficiently into cholesterol. Important. Only about 20% of the cholesterol in our blood comes from food. The rest is produced by the liver, including from carbohydrates. The ketogenic diet. A study of nearly 3,000 people showed that those on a ketogenic diet, high in fat and low in carbs, had a sharp increase in LDL. The right nutrition strategy. Your task is to reduce carbohydrates, reduce saturated and harmful trans fats, never cut protein intake, Better to choose leaner meat and dairy products, but don't eliminate protein or switch to fat-free eating. Evidence of effectiveness. In a study, participants were put on a high-protein, low-carb diet. After a few weeks, their LDL levels dropped sharply. Standard. An adult needs at least one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight for proper function. The role of gut microbiota. Our microbiome influences lipid metabolism and blood cholesterol. A healthier gut microbiome supports a healthier lipid profile. Diet and the microbiome. If you eat lots of simple carbs, sugar, and fatty foods, but few fermented dairy products, raw vegetables, and fruit, your microbiome will be dominated by yeasts, fungi, Firmicutes bacteria, and you'll have fewer lacto and bifidobacteria, which are beneficial for health, weight, appetite, blood sugar, and cholesterol. How to grow the right microbiome. Lacto and bifidobacteria break down long carbohydrate molecules, fiber. Pathogenic bacteria like Clostridia cannot. Solution. If you give your microbiome fiber, only the beneficial bacteria that digest it, lacto and bifidobacteria, will thrive. TMAO, another risk factor. High cholesterol isn't the only driver of cardiovascular disease. Another factor is TMAO, a substance produced by gut bacteria from certain foods. Bacteroides, lacto and bifidobacteria, do not produce it. Clostridia, yeasts, and fungi do. If your microbiome is shaped by sweets and fatty foods, TMAO is produced, raising the risk of hypertension, heart disease, and atherosclerosis. Probiotics. Some companies market probiotics as cholesterol lowering. Current evidence is insufficient for specific strains, but studies showing benefit typically use a mix of lactobacilli and bifidobacteria. Conclusion. Any probiotic with these bacteria is useful. No need to chase a specific one. Vitamins and supplements. Vitamin PP, niacin, proven to reduce cholesterol and atherosclerosis markers. 
can be considered supportive. Caution. As a metabolic activator, it can raise blood pressure. Hypertensive patients must be careful. Sources. Chicken, fish, nuts, berries. Omega-3 and omega-6. Studies show they slightly reduce triglycerides but don't lower LDL. Their benefits are often overstated. They only work in synergy with B vitamins, C, and E, usually all present together in whole foods. Note on fish. Suddenly eating lots of fish may harm if your microbiome is unhealthy. Advice. First, restore your microbiome with vegetables, fiber, fruit, and fermented dairy. Then, after weeks, add more fish. Flaxseed and olive oil. In patients with ischemic heart disease, daily intake of 25 grams olive oil and 30 grams flaxseed for three months led to lower LDL, reduced inflammation, improved artery blood flow. The truth about oils. Common sense rules. No oil will cure you instantly. No oil will kill you instantly. Use moderate amounts. The less you fry or heat it, the healthier it stays. The fresher and more fragrant the oil, the better. There's no fundamental difference between oils. Even the priciest olive oil turns harmful if you deep fry pork in it multiple times. Medication therapy. Statins. How they work. Help the liver clear LDL from blood. Block new cholesterol synthesis. Lower cholesterol nearly by half. Side effects with long-term use. Muscle pain, liver damage, possible type 2 diabetes. Important. Statins buy you time. While on them, you can change lifestyle, add exercise, improve diet, and rebuild a healthy microbiome. Why doctors often recommend lifelong use. Because changing habits after 40 to 70 years is extremely hard. Doctors can't control your diet or activity, but can prescribe an effective pill. However, it's in your best interest to eventually reduce reliance on medication. In metabolic conditions, atherosclerosis, high cholesterol, hypertension, human willpower can do more than a pill. Problem with statins. They lower cholesterol and blood pressure, but don't extend life expectancy. Why? Because if you protect only the heart with statins, but don't change lifestyle, other organs fail. Hormonal imbalance, poor digestion, damaged microbiome, weakened immunity, increased chronic infections. Statins patch the leak in the heart and vessels while the rest of the system collapses. Main takeaway, lifestyle change. The only way to prevent systemic breakdown is not more pills, but a radical lifestyle shift. That's what heals everything and truly prolongs life. Where to begin? Walking, 30 minutes daily at a brisk pace. Nutrition, half your plate should be green vegetables. Microbiome, cultivate a healthier gut flora. These three steps alone are enough to start real change. They can ward off many diseases and restore health. Conclusion. Diseases like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes come from lifestyle, diet, and lack of activity. The cure lies in changing how we live. It's never too late, no matter your age. Stay healthy. Like and subscribe for more health tips and leave your questions in the comments. I read them all.